go ahead. Uh, Jim, by the way, Jim Ogburn. Jim Ogburn. I'm a pathologist. I'm a doctor. Okay, great. Lab you you might know my uh, mother-in-law, Kathy Gibson. She used to be a nurse out here at the hospital. I, I recognize the name. Yes, yes. My wife used to work there too. Her name's Kim Harris. And now she works. We, we moved back to Arlington. She moved back to Arlington. Okay, okay. Yeah, I don't really know, but that's... Okay. So. All right, you go ahead and you're ready when you are. Um, well, are you going to get an introduction from... Well, I was going to have you introduce yourself, and then I'll just... Oh, okay. okay. So. Do the intro. Uh, well, hello. My, my name is Jim Ogburn. Uh, I'm a uh, doctor here in Athens, Texas. I'm a pathologist, a lab doctor. Uh, I'm a tea party guy, uh, but I have very libertarian uh, tendencies, and so I came here to uh, uh, listen to some uh, libertarian candidates today. Good afternoon. My name is Robert Hurst. I'm running for House District 94 in Arlington, Texas. I'm a Libertarian Party candidate. I'm doing quite well right now up in my district. We, uh, we, we sat down here today. Jim wanted to talk about the uh, Article 5 uh, meeting of the states in order to uh, possibly amend the Constitution and this and that. And I told him I was actually at the meetings up in Dallas, Fort Worth, and we had them up there discussing this very topic and some of the issues people had with the, with the Article 5 Convention. And out of all the, all the discussions that, that I've had, and I'm going to let Jim reply on this in just a second, out of all the discussions that I've heard people have, my biggest argument was this. We don't enforce the laws we have today. We don't enforce the Constitution we have today. And without enforcement, what does anything mean? What, what does anything mean, words on a piece of paper, if they're going to be meaningless words and they're not going to be enforced? This would be my greatest argument against, and Jim's, Jim's in favor, which is fine, but uh, this is my greatest argument against it, is the fact that we don't enforce the Constitution. We don't enforce rule of law. We allow so many people to get away with, with basically borderline tyranny, uh, borderline oppression, you know, borderline extortion in this state, and it's time it came to an end. It's time that the people in this state, and it doesn't matter if you're Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, or whatever, whatever your beliefs are, but the, the, the whole ideology behind the, the United States of America, behind Texas, is the fact that we don't believe that, per se, uh, one group of people should be able to persecute another group of people. We don't believe that Democrats should be able to force Republicans, Libertarians, and Independents to live under their rule of law. We don't believe that Republicans should be able to force Democrats, Libertarians, Independents to live a life in their image. And, and neither should Libertarians nor Independents be able to force, force their beliefs on other groups. This is the base core foundation of the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of Texas. The ideology behind it is to eliminate mobs, is to eliminate mob control and persecution of individuals and support civil liberties and freedoms. Now, in reference to the Article 5 Convention, there could be some good come out of it, there's no doubt, but there could also be catastrophic consequences for what comes out of it. Because clearly today, and I'm not picking on anyone in particular, we have a class of citizen in this country that are fairly uneducated, and it's, it's, I believe it's by design. We don't teach Aristotle, Plato, Socrates in the schools anymore. We don't teach Bastiat. We don't teach John Locke. We don't teach the other argument from the other side of the aisle. All we teach in this country anymore is socialism and communist ideology in our education system. So what are the products that we're going to get out of it? Socialist and communist ideology products. That's all that's going to come out. If we're going to be truthful with ourselves, if we're going to be truthful to our, our voting base, to our constituents, to our neighbors, to everyone. We need to stand up and we need to, we need to reform education in Texas. I think this would play a bigger role than an Article 5 constitutional amendment uh, or convention. It would play a huge role if we could actually get back to proper education to get back to giving our children the critical analytical thinking processes they need to make decisions on their own without government or any other mob in this country telling them what to do. Those are my opinions on the Article 5 Constitution of America. Jim, would you please move to Athens so you can run in District 5? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I wow. I don't have much to say. Um, I would... I have maybe a little bit of a different opinion on the Article 5. I hear, I don't disagree with anything you've really said at all. Um, it's not that we're not 
following the constitutionality, I think what they're doing is they're interpreting poorly the Constitution. It's not an analog, yes, no, they're doing it, they're following it or not. They're following it very poorly. And it could be done a lot better. And we have a ruling class uh, that needs to be replenished with new patriots, new blood. Um, the, 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 the basic driver for me for an Article 5 convention would be exactly that, term limits. So we have, you know, Patriots, people that step aside from their careers, that are businessmen and women, uh, they, they have substantive abilities, they go to Washington, they do their job for 12 years, if that's the limit, they come home and help elect the next Patriot uh, to that office. Uh, we have a ruling class that is really just looking out for themselves, and, and you said that, I think you agree with that. Your point is, we should be focusing on the laws we have to make those work. And I agree with that too. Um, so I guess we're, we're kind of both in mostly, mostly agreement with each other. We've found some common ground. We, we certainly have. And that's um, a good story. Let me ask you another question, if I can, um, just totally off that subject. Uh, the uh, Second Amendment, uh, our right to uh, bear arms. Yes, sir. Um, obviously, libertarian point of view, I think I know what, in broad strokes, how you stand on that. Um, but I'll let you, you know, speak for yourself. My specific question is, the Founding Fathers envisioned, in my opinion, from what I interpret, the Second Amendment not only as a, as a personal right for firearm for self-protection, but also to be armed, to be able to rise up if absolutely required against a tyrannical government, which is what they did in 1775. Not that we will advocate such a militaristic solution, but the Founding Fathers did have that in mind for the people to be able to change their government if they had to. In the Federalist Papers, it reads as such. What do you what do you what do you think about that? Well, when you go back and, and you know, I was talking about education a minute ago, Aristotle, politics. It's a great read for anybody that's never read it. I encourage you to read it. Aristotle said, in order to destroy a class of citizens, you must do three things: um, silence them, steal their property, and disarm them. Because if you allow them to have any of those three liberties in life, they'll they'll come back and take the other two liberties back. Okay. That that's the, this is this is old stuff. This is back 400 years before the birth of Christ. These problems that we're experiencing right now in society are not new problems. These are not new at all. These have been happening for over 2,000 years, and we have forgotten where we come from. You know, our founding fathers read about the great philosophers. Most people don't realize the ideology. You know, everybody says, well, the founding fathers wrote the Constitution. They did write the Constitution. But where did the ideology come from? It came from a gentleman named Theramenes, which was about, uh, he was around about 400 years before the birth of Christ. And, and during that time frame, what they found was democracy, or government of the poor, oligarchies, fascism, government of the rich, and, and of course dictatorships, rule of one, whether you want to call them kings, queens, dictators, whatever you want to call them. None of those forms of societies work. And they always end in turmoil, and they always end in war, and they always end in rebellion. Well, for a period of time, and then they're yes. self-destructive. Because they all had one trait in common. One trait in common. They all used law as a means to extort wealth from the classes of citizens and destroy free markets. Yes. Every right. single one of those. There's only one. In, you know, If you read about it, there's only four true forms of government. Government of the poor, government of the rich, rule of one, and a representative constitutional republic, government of all. And the reason the reason that is so important, and this is something we need to get back in the classrooms. I'm even talking to legislators down in Austin right now. We're talking about bringing back this education in Texas in the next few years. Oh, we sure do. Because this is very vitally important. Because people don't realize, when you go to the polls and you vote in a candidate that says, hey, I'm going to give you free stuff, what's he really saying? What's, what he's saying is, I'm going to give you free stuff, but we're going to have to send people through government agencies to take this stuff from other people at the point of a gun. 
So when you're talking about people well, we're rising, we're not going to talk about. No, we don't want to talk. <laughs> but when you're talking, did I mind trick? Yes. <laughs> when you're talking about people rising up, are you really talking about people rising up and attacking other people, or are you talking about people defending their private property rights? Are you talking about people that believe they have a right to their own labor? Are you talking about people that believe they are still free and they have liberty and they should they should be able to follow the path and make their own decisions in life? whether they succeed or whether they fail. And I am a firm believer in that. And I'll tell you why. Just in a nutshell, because I've fallen down in life more than anyone I know. And I would not have become the person I am today had I not been allowed to fail. And that's just a fact. Today I work in the oil and gas industry. I work in logistics. I design equipment for major oil and gas companies. And I do it. I, I, I have three things I focus on when I do it. Cleaner, faster, well actually four things. Cleaner, faster, cheaper, and more efficient. And you know what? I'm kicking, I'm kicking tail and taking names. You know why? Because I finally got my head on straight. But I had to fail in life yeah, to get where I am today, to learn these ideologies. You learned the lessons. You paid for the lessons. You might as well learn them. That's it. I paid for them from a personal experience right. level. And we all life, life lessons are the best lessons you can learn. You know, I'm, I'm like up in Dallas, Fort Worth right now. I'm encouraging churches to come out. Get out of your comfort zone, churches. I'm begging you. Get out of your comfort zone. And get out and start talking to people that you wouldn't normally talk to. Head down to the to the projects. Head down to the places in town where you would never be seen dead walking around because you'd be afraid somebody would say, hey, I got a picture of so-and-so and look where he was. Guys, if we're going to spread truth, then the first thing we have to do is be true to ourselves. And if we're going to be true to ourselves, we have to have enough compassion, enough grace, and enough courage to stand up and walk into the places that we fear and say, you know what? We've got to deliver this message. And this is a message that needs to be delivered throughout this entire state, not just here. Here's, here's my belief of libertarianism. And uh, it's it, it basically summed up in three simple statements. Bring no harm to another individual. Don't damage their property. And don't steal from them. If you haven't violated any of these basic laws of human life, you've committed no crime. And one thing we need to get back in this state, in Texas, and, and across this country, is we need to develop the attitude, no victim, no crime. And if we do that, it'll be a better place to live. Yes. Wow. I do have another question. You ready? No, I'm ready whenever you guys are. Oh, okay. Um, we have been hearing on the news for the, probably the last six months about what appears to be an increasing number of police on citizen crime. Uh, where police have really taken a very, in some cases, unconstitutional tack in dealing with their subject at hand. Uh, the vast majority of policemen and women are, uh, you know, wonderful folks putting themselves in harm's way, keeping us safe, playing by the rules, and, and, and educating themselves to be the professionals that they are. I think we would all agree on it. The vast majority. There is human nature. There are some that are some bad apples, and maybe it's just a, a, a function of you know social media and our instant communication that it seems that there is maybe somewhat more um, you know bad apples in the police force, if you will, today as opposed to 30, 20 years ago. My kind of two-part question is: if you accept that as an accident, if you accept that for the moment as true. Could we help abate this by having police, uh, ha having a system in Texas where police have the uh, cameras on their vests and record everything? And would it also be helpful to have a Texas law for uh, the citizens of an area, a county, a uh, city, to be able to recall? a particular officer for cause if a judge was involved in that process. The truth of the matter is, the system's not going to change until we have accountability. And the only way you can have accountability is to have a level playing field. And the only way we're going to have a level playing field, as long as we have police uh, in this state that are being armed to the hilt by the federal government and by the state with armored personnel carriers, Heavy firepower caliber equipment, it, you know, it's 
human nature, they're going to use these things. And so they, this needs to stop. We need to start uh, electing people that are going to start defunding some of this stuff on, as far as pushing for Texas to be a police state. And I've heard, I've heard a lot of arguments, uh, even down in Austin a couple of weeks ago, I heard the argument that, well, we need these things to fight the war on drugs because the drug dealers are better armed than we are. And I guess my question is, show me the last time uh, a drug dealer was driving a mobile personnel armored carrier through downtown Dallas or through South Dallas or through Houston. Um, I, I believe a lot of people stretch the truth just a tad. Let's be honest. It's very troubling. The it, it is troubling. But, but, but ultimately, ultimately in society, if we want protection, uh, and I say this a lot, when seconds when seconds count, police are only minutes away. And it's no disrespect to our law enforcement officers whatsoever. The fact is, we cannot all carry a policeman in our pocket. So if we have to we have to take responsibility on some level for our own personal safety. And maybe that means places we go. Maybe that means maybe we need to arm ourselves if we if we're going to be out and about. We're going to be in unknown a, a territory or whatever. I'm a very very pro of. Uh, pro supporter of the Second Amendment. I support concealed carry, and I also support open carry in Texas. And I do believe that legislation will get passed. Um, I just met Tuesday this week down in Austin with many grassroots activists. We testified in front of TABC. TABC is wanting, they had one gun club that wanted to sell alcohol at gun shows. So, and it was a very significant amount of people at this gun club compared to the overall number of people in the state that own farms. So they want to change the whole envelope of the rules to apply to one little group and make them apply to everyone. Well, first of all, TABC doesn't have the right to write law. That's the whole purpose of electing House Representatives. It's the whole purpose of electing State Senators. It's the whole purpose of having a governor. It's, that's, that's our process. We are a representative constitutional republic. And some people don't like that. Even some government agencies don't like having to follow this, this method of government. But I've got a message for you. It is our rule of government, and we will continue to follow it. And anyone that steps outside those lines and starts trying to write rules and laws or make laws on their own without going through the representation process, without going through the Senate process, without going through the governor's processes, then we're going to stand up and we're going to, we're going to take notice and we're going to put the word out what's going on. TABC, uh, for example, and, and they, they say their intentions were well-meaning, and they may have very well been well-meaning, but the fact is what they were about to do was force the majority of gun shows to close in the state of Texas. And that's a big issue because... We're a big Second Amendment state. You know, most people don't realize we got 25, a little over 25 million people living in this state. We've got over 40 million farms in this state. What does that tell you about Texas? No, everybody may not own a farm, but I guarantee you we have a lot of guns in the state. There's no doubt about it. Now, when you look at those numbers, why are people not being slaughtered in the streets with 40 million guns in a state with a population of 25 million people? Why literally are thousands of people not being shot down every day in our streets? I can tell you why. Because a society that embraces the right to self-defense is a respectable society. Because you will respect, you will respect other people, whether you're law enforcement, which is what you were talking about, yes, sir. whether you're law enforcement right. or whether you're a private citizen, you will learn to respect other people because there will be immediate consequences for your actions I guess. should you violate someone's rights, liberties, and freedom. I mean, it's guns that give us that. Excuse me, sir. You're saying it's guns that give us that. Yes. It's not the rule of law. The rule of law gives us a limited amount of protection, but limited by what? Limited by the fact that are we going to enforce it? Are you saying the Constitution and all our laws are enforced today? I would disagree. No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm not, I'm not, I, I understand what you're saying. I'm going to yield the chair. Go ahead. Very nice to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you guys. Yo, I agree with you. Laws are great if we enforce them. Our problem today is we're not enforcing them. We're not enforcing the Constitution. I don't, I don't see it as a matter of enforcement. I see it as a failure of the rule of law. The people, specifically lawyers and judges and politicians, that are in charge of, they're in, they're, it's their job. Just, I don't know what your Absolutely. job is. But, I don't have a job. But, but it's their job 
to, to run the place yes. under the auspices of the Constitution, the rule of law. Absolutely. And it's their decision, the bureaucratic decision, the people that work for us, that has given us a 95-97% uh, plea bargain rate. Yes. It, it, I disagree with you violently or vehemently that the gun is not what does it. The rule of law is supposed to be what does it and is doing it. When an American goes anywhere in the world, gets off an airplane, he cannot have a gun. Follow me? Can't do that. In America, I got a brother he's going to India Tuesday. All over the world all the time. Mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia, uh, er everywhere. And, and we're doing business all over the world. And those people, specifically the Americans that are making this money all over the world, are not protected by guns. No. They are not. But, but a lot of them have died because they haven't been protected by guns. When you say a lot. Daniel Pearl got his head cut off because he wasn't protected by a gun. That's what I'm saying. Rule of law only works if people follow it. There well, are people who don't follow law. It's not law. working in this country. It's well, not working for at least... Uh, uh, I'd say 65 to 75 percent of the people that cannot afford to apprise themselves of a lawyer. Absolutely, and that that's if you can't if you can't if you can't get a good lawyer, what difference does it make about the rule of law? Well, it, right. it, at least 50 percent of our people cannot hire a lawyer. Absolutely, and that's so, another so they problem. Not, they, don't, the they, don't avail, they can't avail themselves of the rule of law. They have to take what. The rule of law is characterized by the bureaucrats, etc. Decide that it is for them. Yes, and I would agree with that. Well, that's not okay, and that is no. Dope. And I didn't say it was okay, but I, said the, I would agree the, with the, that. The, the fact of a gun. I don't know how many times you've done it, but I've walked in a, in coffee shops and be a group of law enforcement people sitting at a table like this, and. Uh, <laughs> Let's just say this is my gun hanging out in the aisle. Yeah. Now that does nothing for me. No. It absolutely does nothing for me. In fact, one time I was smuggling marijuana and I walked into a coffee shop, about Furious, Texas, and they sat down in the boot right adjacent to a group of law enforcement. One of them, about 300 pounds, this gun hanging out in the aisle. And, and that, 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 that does nothing. What, what makes this place work is what's in our heart. Exactly. And what's in our mind. This gun thing is in the past. The, I would disagree. Okay, well tell me, uh, how many guns have you picked up today? How many have I picked up today? One. Okay. You're unusual. Most people don't even... I mean, people don't know. I, I go in people's houses, and, and they don't know how to act. Their children don't know how to act. We're not taught any longer what to do with a gun or how important or how deadly they are. That's true. Absolutely. We, uh, we have severe problems with guns. And the, the people that are in charge of us that we elect are not willing to even give us some reasonable laws about guns. That's true. I mean, that's true. what do you think about Vermont's law, gun laws? Uh, I'm not that familiar with them, to be honest. They, they don't have any. Well, there you go. I'm in favor of that. Vermont doesn't seem to have a lot of problems, do they? They don't have any gun laws other than federal gun laws. But I'm laws. saying, as far as in society, do they have a severe problem yeah. with it? I'm well, not I'll tell you what, if they're, they're a United States Senator, Mr. Leahy, goes to the Canadian border and he drives up to the Border <laughs> Patrol and he says... Uh, the Border Patrol guy stand there and says, uh, get out of the car. Right. On his license plate, it says United States Senator. And uh, he says, by what authority are you telling me to get out of the car? He just asked a question. He's right. not being intimidating. He's an old man. Nothing to Correct. And the, and the guy pats his pistol. See, that was just wrong. Well, let's be honest. Well, you, well, that's what I'm saying. There's a difference between self-defense and using coercion and force against me. Have you ever been shot at in this country? Not in this country, no. I've been shot at in this country eight or ten times. Oh. Well, you must hang out in rougher places. Wow. Downtown Dallas. 
That's a pretty rough place. Though. Downtown Dallas, I've been shot at. And uh, thank God, most of the people that own guns now don't know how to shoot. Right? Well, I, I can tell you this. When I was really? driving back, uh, when I was driving back from Hobbs, New Mexico, have a good guy with a gun. The only on the defense. Texas New Mexico border, right. I had a blowout. I'd worked, I'd worked 14 hours that day, and Where I was exhausted. You? I was on the highway coming from Hobbs, New Mexico, back into Texas, and I was right there on the border. Well, a lot of people don't know this: the illegal aliens come up the borders of the states. Why? Because if the police start chasing them in one state, they jump across the border in the other state. If they chase them over here, they jump back across. It, it's, it's also but, where they build but, the roads. Well, no, there aren't any roads going straight up the state line. No, but they, they, they run, run east and west. They run, and they're they're around, north they, and they south. run around. The, the roads that they do use are the well, ones that are built and they were built that way. Well, let, let me finish my story. Now, what happened to me was I had a blowout, and I was too tired. I've never, I, I've rarely ever used roadside assistance in my life because I will get out and change my own tire because it's faster, and I want to get on down the road. But I just bought dinner, fast food, which is not healthy for you. But when you work 14 hours, you, you do what you have to do. I think a lot of people have been in that boat. And when I had the blowout, I called roadside assistance. They said we'll be there in 20 minutes. I said, well, I'll just call them, let them come change it, and I'll eat my dinner. So I'm waiting on roadside assistance. I had an illegal alien walk up behind my truck, stand directly behind it. One went to the passenger door, one come to the driver's side door, and they started yelling at me in Spanish and pointing at the ground aggressively. Uh, I was very fortunate in the fact that my wife had just bought me a new Ruger 22 rifle with a 30 round clip and I'd been out shooting it the day before and it was laying in the back of the truck. It wasn't loaded. But I grabbed my Ruger, I threw the clip in, and I showed them the rifle, and they took off running. A few moments later, somebody apparently saw what happened, so I guess they called the police. The police come wheeling up, and they said, what happened? I explained it to them that, look, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not naive, okay, to what goes on out in society. They were getting ready to rob me. That's what was going on. You don't, no, you don't walk up to a person's vehicle, one in the back, one on the side, and one on the side. That's an aggressive posture movement, okay? That is an aggressive posture movement because they're not wanting you to be able to escape. They want you. That's why they're there. Or they would, because if they were coming up in a friendly gesture, they would have all three come up to the driver's side window to talk to me, and they did not. Okay. So I knew just from the way they were acting, something was up. And all I did was show them my rifle, and they took off running. Supposedly the cops chased them. I don't know if they were. Why didn't you just? Why didn't you move up? Move up where? Where? It doesn't make any difference. I'm telling you, if your life's in danger, but see, you, my life was in danger. If you're if you're in fear, and I don't care if you got one well, wheel see, or four wheels, you start punching that gas, and then people outside your vehicle start moving. Just like this thing just happened in St. Louis. You see one of those shootings where the cop car pulls up, and is he's in an SUV, and his right front wheel pops the curb in a parking lot, in a street situation in a city, that is an aggressive move by a policeman. And you're assuming I was afraid. I wasn't afraid. I, I'm not saying you're afraid. I'm just saying you're I using was defending my concern. My you were just showing concern. Well, yeah, I was defending myself. Right. There well, was no, I was not afraid at all. Well, they hadn't done anything yet. No, they hadn't done anything. And I didn't do anything to them. They left. And they but, didn't do anything. Well, they were yelling aggressively. Well, they were yelling aggressively. And he says they're pointing at the ground. That's enough for me. I don't need to wait until somebody draws my blood. Well, the military, that's considered a hostile intent, and it's a uh, reason to aim away. Well, y'all all, all different cultures. You're saying they're pointing at the ground. I'm telling you from my experience in cities and down there that if they had wanted to do something to you, it would have started immediately before you had time to respond because they would know that you might have a gun. If they were going to do something, they would have warned me. But I, I can't base it on anything that happened to me on predictions. I can only base it on what actually happened. I'm basing it on the facts of what happened. All I'm trying to tell you is that guns don't solve our problems on a day-to-day -day basis anymore. They don't even feed us on a day-to-day -day basis anymore. They're more or less a hobby. The laws that are passed are made for the gun hobbyists generally, not the people that want to protect themselves. So you don't think guns are deterrent at all? I think guns... Uh, may be a deterrent at some time, but I think many more. Maybe. Number-wise. How many, when's the, 
tell me when's the last time somebody stormed a police station to shoot all the cops? You think maybe they're the turn? I think they are the turn. Well, who would I don't want think to it's shoot maybe. cops? Why would you want to shoot? Well, I'm just saying, why would you want to shoot anybody? I'm, I'm giving you an example. You said maybe they're a the turn. I'm saying they are a the turn. Because nobody in their right mind, if you have 20 people in this facility right here, and they, they're all carrying firearms. Nobody in their right mind is going to come through that front door trying to rob people in this building. Nobody in their right mind is going to come in here and try to shoot people. That's because right. there are going to well, be you're immediate... Probably, you're telling me you're armed. Okay. I'm not armed right now. I'm giving you an example. But you could be. I could so be. could I. I'm going to go get my concealed carry. I, I want know. people around me with guns. I don't the know. only I don't defense know. against a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Well, and statistically, the, the if, you, if you've got a gun, it's more likely that somebody's going to get hurt in an accidental way or that you didn't intend to get hurt than they would be. I disagree. Then, well, then why is it gun safety? I don't believe it, we we just, anyone just, who has a concealed carry that. license or carries a gun or messes with a gun on a regular basis is going to be safe enough to not negligently discharge that weapon or accidentally shoot someone that they're not intending to shoot. There's no what do you think about a guy like me? I'm a, I'm a That's fella. The That's why I said negligently. Let's, let's face it. A gun, a gun, everybody says, oh, it was an accidental discharge. No, it wasn't. It was negligence 100% exactly. of the time. A gun, first of all, has to be loaded. Second of all, the safety has to be off. Third of all, your finger has to be on the trigger. There is no such thing as an accidental discharge of a farm. There's, there's mishandling of firearms, there's ignorance of firearms, but there is absolutely no such thing as an accidental discharge. Then why don't they have a law that says that? Why don't they have a law like in the military? If you're in the military, you got a gun, it's under triple lock and key unless it's turned out to a person. If it's if it's in the that armory, that's with with triple Second Amendment rights. To huh? have why would, why would we need a law? How does that help me if I'm being mugged? <laughs> well, if you're being mugged, you're in the use of it. You've got it on your person. It doesn't have and to be I in took triple all lock. Those and key. triple locks off when? Huh? No, I'm not saying. Well, the gun is on your person. It doesn't have to be a triple. It can't be a triple lock and key. The, the government has no business telling me triple lock and key in my own home. Castle law. I've got a loaded shotgun right next to my bed. I mean, it's, it's loaded, ready to roll. I do too. Keep one next to the front door. Well, I don't. Well, I do. I tell you a good way. If you want to keep firearms <laughs> in your home, do. Huh? if you want to keep firearms in your home loaded, and what my uncle showed me, and this is a really good way, get you some uh, like the the mounts that they used to put in pickup trucks for gun racks, and put them up over the door, and that's a great way to do it. Number one, your children can't get hold of you. You don't have to worry about little kids getting up there and getting them. Yeah. And, and, and I like that. Or, and I have a gun safe in my house, too, and I keep my guns. majority of my guns locked up with my gun safe. I only keep one gun out for personal. And, and we're lucky we don't have kids at home, but my kids were raised yeah. with understanding and respecting guns. Yeah. And, and I really think that's what, that's what stops people from misusing firearms, is being raised around them, learning that this isn't just a, a, a toy. Well, let me tell you it's something a tool. personally. It's, it's experience. 20 years, reason. 20 years I took people's cars away from them. Downtown Dallas. I do too. So I've got to go to another on parking lot. I have a pleasure for your service. I will keep close now. Okay. I got well, I'll, so let's see, they're going to close hey, out real quick, but I'm still listening. Quick, I've got to get on the road. Yo, man, dude, I just wanted to say thanks, man. Robert, it's been a pleasure. Dude, you answered some really tough, tough hitting questions, man. We appreciate it. So, uh, as always, stay blessed and know we got an eye on the camera because that's what's up.